Welcome back. Next weekend, the National Convention of the NAACP arrives in Detroit. At the moment, eight of the Democratic presidential candidates are scheduled to appear. We expect it'll be even more. Uh, let's talk about it with the Reverend Wendell Anthony, the president of the Detroit branch of the NAACP. Reverend Anthony, thanks for coming. Thanks, Devin. It's oh, very busy for you. I know. Tell right me now. about it. So <laughs> glad to be with you. Thank you, sir. Let me uh, give me an idea about what you hope is accomplished, given the intense focus that you're going to have and so many people showing up. It's easy for this to get all disparate and Absolutely. chaotic. Well, first of all, thank you. Flashpoint. This is the point. Uh, we expect about 11 to 12,000 people yeah. from across the country. Our theme is when we fight, we win, because we got a lot of things to fight about and to struggle for. We have not yet crossed the Jordan. Um, we will have an impact in the city of Detroit somewhere between uh, 11 and 15 million dollars by virtue of all the stuff that goes on. Sure. There will be forums on economic development, on youth leadership, our Axel, Afro Culture, Technological Scientific Olympics, criminal justice system. There will be an opportunity for the neighborhood vendors to come downtown and participate. Because one of the things I want to make sure is when you go to conventions, Devin, people usually go downtown. Yep. They don't go to the neighborhood. So we're bringing the neighborhood downtown, Spirit Plaza, and also in Cobo Center. There'll be local vendors. So come on down. There are many free yep. opportunities. Big event at Beacon Park on Saturday, open to the public, starts at 6 o'clock, Kumo D. Yeah, you don't have to be a registered um, attendee no, for a lot of no. these things. No, Families, yeah, yeah. food, entertainment, Kumo D, Dougie Fresh, other people, come on down, have a great time. There are going to be uh, folk from the presidential yes. campaign. It's going to be hard to get the headlines back <laughs> away from that part of this, isn't it? Well, that's on Wednesday morning at 8.30, the mm -hmm. 24th. Yep. That's open to the public as well, but first come, first serve, because we have a number of delegates that will be seated, but first come, first serve. Uh, and interesting enough, uh, Devin, the Detroit branch is the only branch in the country that has hosted presidential candidates and presidents. Four of the candidates who are coming, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, we've all spoken at our Freedom Fund dinner. Before. Yes. Only Detroit. Um, we're looking forward to all of them coming. There'll be at least 10 on stage, and you can come and they will be speaking and you can interact with them. And then the others will be in our exhibit hall for you to go and to interact with them personally and to hear from them. You mentioned presidents. I you, didn't mention. Well, oh, oh, you, you, oh, you did oh, oh, yes, yes, you did. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, have, have you invited President Trump to come? Well, the, the association always invites the president, regardless of who he is mm -hmm. or who she may yet be. And so, therefore, uh, 45, Mr. Trump has gotten an invitation. And so they're mulling. I, my, my information is that he wants to come. Uh -huh. Whether he's going to come or not, I don't know. Um, we know what that will mean. We do it out of protocol uh, because that's what it is. What do you mean you know what that will mean? Uh, in terms of the excitement, mm -hmm. oh, good okay. and bad, mm -hmm. uh, because of his policies. Um, Trump is more than a notion. And we do not like his policies. When I say that, the NAACP, we just be, we don't. He spends like a lot of time right now talking about the lowest ever recorded uh, unemployment rate for African Americans. Well, he says that, that, that Devin, that. but you got to go back to Barack Obama. He didn't just create this; he's using this, and to the degree that, yeah, you may be uh, articulating that number, but the question is, is that really getting into the community? Has that really affected people who are no longer looking for jobs? Who are not in the job market? Understood. The, to the broader question, yes. though, there are those uh, who have always grown very weary of their assumption that black voters will stay with the Democratic Absolutely. Party and that the Democratic Party doesn't always earn that love. Let me just say this. The Democratic Party, in some cases, takes uh, us for granted. The Republican Party doesn't take us at all. We often say that the Democrats lack spine and the, the Republicans lack heart. So you got to put those together. I'm simply saying, and we're saying, it's about policy, not personality. Mm -hmm. It's not about party, it's about policy. Right now, the policies of this president are antithetical to us. What he's doing at the border, that's policy. Separating babies from their families, not giving them toothbrushes, toothpaste, showers, baths, cutting off the asylum program, which is against international law and the U.S. Council. That's, that's policy. All the folks that, has, uh, that he has... It's specific to that, the NAACP and African-Americans how? Specific, specific yeah. to the degree that we support immigration. We support 
education. We support the troops. We don't support cutting um, health care. We support affordable health care for everybody. He does not. His people are in court now trying to diminish it and to kill it. We don't support the policies uh, of folk in this. We don't support Betty uh, DeVos and what she's doing with education. So it's antithetical how, to us. How energized do you feel? Because uh, Can't you tell? True. I'm energized. Uh, you're energized. <laughs> the electorate, though, we go back to 2016. Yes, yes. 80,000 fewer Absolutely. Detroiters cast their Absolutely. votes in a state where Absolutely. Donald Trump won by 11,000. And you can tell what happens for your cause if your if your voters stay home. Well, I, How energetic do you feel they are now? By uh, especially given this field of uh, well, well, twenty well, some Democrats. Well, I hope that it's our cause, which includes you too, Devin, because <laughs> uh, I, I, I believe that you know, over here. Yeah, what do you no mean? question about it. You, as an individual, don't like what's happening with that. I know that. You don't have to say it. I know your position, <laughs> but you don't like that. You don't like that. And so we're some saying, yeah, you cannot stay home. This is too critical. We have the census next year, even though he tried to kill it by putting this question on, and we thank the Supreme Court for beating it back. He just did everything he could to try to put this question it's on. It's a legitimate but, uh, but Devin, yeah, issue, though, isn't it, Devin, to wonder how many Devin, citizens Devin, there we have? are ways in which he admitted just As he does. on yes. Yes. Uh, Friday yes. to get this. He didn't need to put the question on. And the reason they did it, based upon the guy that they used, his research, uh, Heifler, or Heffler, whatever his name was, he's a Republican strategist. He told them in 2015, if you want to reduce the vote, you got to put this question on. And he just acknowledged that he didn't need to do it. We're going to have a better way to do it. That's to diminish the brown vote and it's to take away the resources for the black vote in our community. I, I knew I would get him energized before. <laughs> we are the time, Devin. We are oh, on. Lord, have Into mercy. Y'all really got the right name, Flash Point. Because all I need was a